Um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this session. Uh, I'm uh, Ying Chun Guo from IBM China. I have an English name, Daisy. You can call me either way you like. Um, so the, the, the gentleman stand aside uh, <laughs> is Tom Fulfield. He's the community manager. He also spent uh, many times with the OpenStack uh, IATN team. So I will have this opportunity to have the talk with him. Um, so uh, I'm from OpenStack uh, IATN team. Um, the mission of my team is to uh, support OpenStack to become a globalized software. Um, so in this talk, I will cover, we will cover below questions. What is a successful global community? What have been done in OpenStack and what will be done in the future? So b before I started, I will spend a little time on the background introduction. Uh, I, I think uh, may, uh, maybe most people, uh, maybe most of you may understand the, uh, these words, internationalization, localization, globalization. Um, but uh, I will um, just give a short introduction to make sure we are on the same page. So uh, internationalization is a, is a process of designing software uh, application to make it easily uh, adapt, uh, make it easily adapted with many languages and uh, and the regions without any code change. So localization is a process to to adapt uh, software with uh, with uh, with specific regions and languages. So make uh, uh, by adding by adding some. Uh, region-specific components and uh, translating the text. So globalization is a combine of these two. Um, so um, internationalization are doing uh, is is done once when we design the software and implement the software. So localization can be done uh, once uh, you want to the software uh, to be adopted to a certain region. Um, so uh, next, uh, I will start uh, the, the talk. Uh, what is a successful global community? How to make a successful global community? Uh, so I think there is no doubt that OpenStack is a global community. Um, the, the picture here uh, shows the countries uh, in, uh, the countries with, with member in OpenStack Foundation in October 2018 and, uh, and, uh, and uh, 13. So uh, you see uh, OpenStack have membership among all over the world. Um, so next page, uh, we also have global users. Uh, the picture here shows the web, web access uh, data reported on, uh, on September. So you see uh, United States is the, is the bigger, con is, is the country with the with the biggest uh, visitor to the website, but it's only uh, only 30 percent. 30, 30, uh, 30 so around 70 percent of the visitor to the website are from the country uh, which don't speak English, maybe. So um, OpenStack also have global meetings and user groups. We all know uh, uh, the, the, this summit is. Uh, it's, it's the first summit to be hosted um, in outside the U.S. Uh, and, the, and the percentage uh, among, among half of the attendees to this summit speaking English and the half are not speaking English. So the user groups, um, there are around uh, maybe 70 user groups in the, in the, uh, in the, in the website now. So, um, OpenStack have global people. So how about the content? Um, the, the, the items I listed here are the regular content, uh, are the contents um, in, in many regular communities. So you'll see software and documents and some promotion materials, for example, our website, uh, our newsletter release note or something like that. And we, we also have some 
tools for community collaboration, for example, the wikis and the blogs. So do we need to globe, do we need to, uh, do, we, do we need all of these contents to be globalized? Uh, what's the prior, priority? So maybe some people can, uh, can argue that OpenStack is a infrastructure level, level software. Uh, it's like a operation system. So people who play with OpenStack may be familiar with the English, uh, maybe can, may be able to write and read in English. But to tell you the truth, um, I'm a well-educated people in, in China. I have been in a US company for eight years. But if you would like me to choose between Chinese language, a Chinese document and an English document, I will prefer Chinese document. So reading Chinese document uh, by Chinese people uh, is, is more easier to make them understandable and to save them time. Um, so uh, here, I, I did an investigation of the uh, famous communities, famous open so uh, uh, famous software communities. So the the top line uh, are the uh, contents, the, the regular contents of a community. And the, the first column is the, uh, is the well-known uh, global communities like Ubuntu, Mozilla, LibreOffice, GNOME, Media, Me, MediaWiki, Android. So you see uh, Ubuntu is a well, uh, Ubuntu is a well-globalized community. The, their software, and their documents. Um, there is a there is a Chinese uh, uh, there there is a, there is a, a Chinese website and there is a Chinese wiki uh, Chinese version uh, Chinese wiki website for Ubuntu to to uh, containing many documents and many uh, many useful information. Um, so Ubuntu also have uh, have teams. Uh, named as uh, local community teams. Local community teams will help Ubuntu to do the local promotion and uh, translation. So Mozilla is also a well globalized community. The website of uh, Mo Mozilla supports uh, tens, of, tens of languages. So if you think about the well, uh, the, how many people use, uh, how many countries use Firefox, uh, you, you may understand the, the situation. So the, the interesting is Android. Android is, um, uh, is a platform. So uh, actually the website of Android is not translated at all. But we all know Android can support uh, local, uh, can support internationalization to, to the application running on the Android. Um, and the user interface and the, many, and the messages are, are, are translated in Android. Um, so, uh, based on this information, uh, and uh, we 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 look into the chart. We, we look into this slide again. So, I will mark uh, user interface, messaging, user documents, and website as a top priority to be to be translated and globalized. So, uh, and developer documents, uh, distributed messages, and the wikis are well to help them globalize. Okay, so I, I will transfer to Tom to introduce what we have done. Thank you, Daisy. And uh, Daisy has been very kind because uh, she's given me all of uh, the awesome slides to present because the internationalization team of OpenStack has already been quite successful thanks to her work and the work of many people around the world. So I want to run through with you uh, some of our successes. Uh, you may have heard of the OpenStack Operations Guide, uh, a book that was produced in a, a sprint style uh, designed to hand to operators uh, to get them up to speed on how to build OpenStack clouds or operate them. This book has been fully translated into Japanese, and uh, there are a couple of other languages which are about 70% of the way translated. So right now, there are people reading this book in Japanese, and it's a 50,000-word book. So this was an amazing achievement uh, of the team. However, the big success for us in the internationalization team was actually to learn about the process for translating books and how it's different from translating strings in code. For example, uh, when you're translating a book, you require a lot more context, especially if you're going through the review process to try and determine the quality of the translation. 
And so the Japanese team uh, invented a, a system uh, to fix some inadequacies in our tooling uh, to enable this book to be translated and reviewed to a very high quality of language. The other one that you may have seen uh, in the release notes is in the Havana release, we've translated the dashboard into 12 different languages. And uh, this is the work of many, many, many people around the world, some of whom worked in right into the late evening before release to get these, uh, get these done. And uh, it was a really successful demonstration of how, for a code project, we were able to uh, create a community around certain languages and translate strings so that nowadays people can just simply from a drop-down box select the language that they want to interact with OpenStack in. Sorry, you need to take a photo? Okay, cool. Um, all these slides and the video should be available online. Uh, another success is uh, recently OpenStack Foundation launched a site called Ask OpenStack where anyone could come and ask uh, and answer questions about uh, anything to do with OpenStack. And we decided to try and experiment and make a uh, localized version of this in the Chinese language because as you saw on the statistics that Daisy presented, we have a lot of users who speak the Chinese language coming to our website. And this was actually an example where the OpenStack internationalization team was able to join another community and help get their translation efforts up to the 100% mark or, or close to it so we could use their software. Uh, perhaps one of the, the biggest uh, successes and the foundation uh, for all of these activities is the tool chain. We have a really good tool chain that enables us to go from the code into a translation system and back again, so it means that right now, today, whenever someone checks in a code patch or a new document into OpenStack, it's automatically uploaded into a system uh, that translators can then see those uh, strings and immediately start translating. And that happens automatically with every single patch. Similarly, once the translations have been completed, the system will, again, automatically download those translated strings and put them back in the repository. And we've closed the loop there so that we can make translations available very quickly, and we can make the strings available to be translated very quickly. And uh, this was developed in-house mainly by Daisy and has given us a lot of uh, flexibility to change the way that we work depending on how the developers uh, are uh, going. But by far the biggest success we've had is the team and the growth of the team. We have now more than 200 people involved in OpenStack translation. Uh, some of these people may actually not uh, be part of other parts of, of the OpenStack project at all. And in fact, they're just people who enjoy translating or enjoy language. And this is one of the big differences of this team. It's actually pretty much mostly volunteer-based, uh, which makes it very different to the development team, where the majority of people are actually paid to work on OpenStack. And so we're really benefiting from people who have skills in multiple languages uh, and are able to join the translation team easily through the interface. And as a result of starting to put a bit more formality around this team and give the internationalization team a, a place uh, to rest and communicate, a weekly meeting, we're now translating more than 100,000 words a month, which is effectively translating two copies of the operations guide every month. And that's looking to continue and increase over time. So uh, I now want to uh, just go quickly into a bit about what we've done this week. It's very convenient that we're the final session of the entire conference because we can talk to you about the particular sessions we had in the Design Summit. We had four sessions this time in uh, four different tracks, uh, amazingly. Uh, translation didn't have its own track at this point, but we'll talk a bit about that later. So the first one was uh, publishing translated documentation on the documentation track, specifically talking about full manuals and books rather than code strings. And uh, we had a really robust discussion around how that works and came to the conclusion that uh, documentation is very different to code strings and needs especially a different review process. So we're going to set up uh, something like a staging server where partially translated documents can be viewed. So you can review translated strings in context similar to the model that the Japanese team used with the operations guide. 
We also had a session on the internationalization policy of messages. So up until uh, this session, every single message in the code was treated with the same priority, which means a user-facing message and a debug log message were both given the same weighting in terms of translators. We determined that actually user-facing messages should have a higher priority for translation than debug log messages and these kind of things. So we've decided to uh, implement in Oslo a categorization of those messages, which we can use to prioritize a particular message. In addition, when it comes to translating log files, uh, we've determined in order to uh, make them searchable when they are translated into other languages, we need to implement a message ID system for log files. Uh, the third session we had was translation tools and scripts uh, from the infrastructure track. This is predominantly about that tool chain we saw before that goes between the code, the translation system, and back. Uh, we looked at some of the gaps we've got right now. Uh, so we determined, uh, thanks to Ryan over there, that our wiki already has the translate functionality enabled, which means we can easily turn that on and start translating some of the important pages on the wiki that people need. We've also uh, determined that since uh, TransFX is now a closed source system, uh, meaning we can't extend it to meet our needs, uh, we are starting to look at the open source alternatives. And we've decided to try and work with all of the different open source uh, translation software uh, tool communities to uh, raise feature requests and try and get those to the same standard that we're having with TransFX today, eventually uh, planning to a move onto an open source platform. And uh, finally, uh, just before this session, we had the Icehouse release uh, schedule and coordination session. And we were very pleased with the response from all of the project technical leads in terms of supporting the internationalization effort, giving an appropriate amount of time for spring freeze and translations to happen. We're also um, uh, aiming to get better communications after the string fees, if there is a need to change a string, to pipe that through the internationalization team to ensure that we have complete translations. So I now want to invite Daisy back up to the stage uh, to explain the vision uh, for OpenStack into Thank internationalization. You, Tom. Uh, so Tom wants me to give you a vision of what we are going to do in the future. Uh, so for me, I'm, uh, I'm going to focus on three items, teaming, tooling and the globalization. So um, uh, we now have OpenStack uh, IATN team. So most of the team, are, uh, most of the team members are, tra are, are translation team coordinators. Uh, we all know that internationalization is more, be more, more than translation. We also want to cover the OpenStack software itself uh, internationalization. So we, uh, we would like to invite more developers to join this team. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we would like to rename our translation team, for example, maybe China translation team to try China localization team. So uh, the, we also uh, would like to invite developers to join our localization team to uh, support not only translation, but also some of the localized work in OpenStack software. So uh, as to tooling, we would like to run a translation platform to support uh, the translation of uh, all the stuff in OpenStack community. And we will use the integration tools to do the automation integration with the OpenStack uh, infrastructures like the, the JIT, the, the website, or the wiki. So uh, uh, we, uh, for, as to the globalization, uh, of course, we will work on the translation. And we will do a, a IATN test and a report to figure out the gaps um, among, uh, open, in OpenStack uh, internationalization area. So um, then we will know uh, what, uh, what, what, is, what are missed in OpenStack. Uh, and as, as a follow-up of the design summit, we will enable the message IDs and separate the message into different domains. Um, so uh, we, uh, we, we definitely want more people to join uh, IATN team. So 
if if you are developers, um, if you are developers, um, we warmly we warmly wanted you we warmly want you to join our team to work on OpenStack IATN. So OpenStack is a is a software with with a great future. You can grow with together with this future to to. To, you, you can grow with this, this software uh, to, to see how it is how it can uh, be uh, how it grows a, a well globalized software uh, and if you are a translator of course we want you to join uh, if you if you are not good at developer maybe you uh, are not want to translate uh, but you can also join us as a tester um, we, we also you, you just need to run a lap, laptop uh, with your localized setting and run OpenStack and report back to us. So uh, Tom will introduce uh, the official program in sure. OpenStack community. So uh, during the Havana cycle, uh, OpenStack technical committee determined that there was a need to recognize projects in addition to just the projects that were producing code uh, in some formal way. And uh, in essence, this uh, idea of OpenStack programs was, uh, was born. So open pro OpenStack programs are simply efforts which are essential to the completion of our mission. And our mission in OpenStack, as I've written there, is to produce the ubiquitous open source cloud computing platform. And even if you just stop that mission there, you can see straight away that if we're going to be the ubiquitous open source cloud platform, we need to be globalized, we need to be internationalized, we need to be localized. And so I believe that during the Ice House Summit, uh, the internationalization team will request uh, to become an official program of uh, OpenStack. And uh, hopefully uh, that will go well and uh, we'll get the recognition that we can uh, get most of the internationalization team and get our own summit track, uh, for example. So we don't have to go to four different tracks to talk about what we need to. But uh, I believe uh, this is the final slide, Daisy. And uh, you had the, the, sli the, the text for this, didn't you? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so we, we want to keep learning, keep growing, and keep working. We've gone through a very, uh, very uh, dramatic change over the past six months in terms of our understanding of the needs for internationalization and localization in OpenStack. We've learned a lot about review and tool chain and how to bring community together. And we want to build on that to keep that community growing, keep the momentum up, keep up with the 1,600 software developers who are working to make OpenStack successful around the world. And uh, above all, we're, we're practical people, so we're just going to keep working and keep doing this every, every day. Thank you, Tom. So. Very good. I uh, believe we uh, now have some time for questions. Yeah, so any questions, comments, suggestions? <laughs> uh, Sorry? Right, right, yes, yes. We should, we should have translated these slides uh, into 10 different languages, that's correct. <laughs> okay, we'll upload that to TransFX after this talk. Sorry, there was another question over there. Uh, yes, so we've got people uh, which are really active in more than about 20 or 30 different countries, uh, but there are some less active in even more countries. So yes, we, we welcome everyone in any kind of languages. and. Uh, we've also, uh, for example, if you look at the Spanish language, we've had some requests from our friends in Mexico to have a particular localization of Spanish for, for Mexico in addition to Spanish. So there's, there's lots of flexibility and lots of options, and we definitely welcome everyone. Uh, so, I believe in Japan you have a guy called Motoki-san, and uh, he's 
uh, taken up the role of a, a language coordinator for Japanese. You can either approach him directly or you can just sign up yourself on the TransFX website, or you can post on the mailing list introducing yourself. Uh, it's whatever is convenient for you. So some, some countries like Japan have a really well coordinated uh, uh, translation effort and translation team. Other countries just rely on people finding the website themselves and starting translations without any, any effort. So we, we can introduce you directly after the presentation if you wish. paid by IBM. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we actually have already had uh, some uh, companies support us. IBM has contributed a significant number of translations. Our yeah. friends at DDT in Vietnam have contributed a significant amount of translations. The guys at Cloudlot in France yeah. are contributing things. Yeah. But, uh, so we are, getting, we are getting bits and we're finding that, yes, if yes, but having... having but, but I think most of the translators are working uh, on in their spare time. So. Yeah. And uh, it, it also, like for some of the uh, languages in less populous countries, for example, Nepali or maybe even Basque or, or something like this, it would be challenging to, to get commercial support. But yes, you're right, we should also continue to investigate commercial support. Seems like everyone wants to sleep and or <laughs> have a party. And the good news is you have 13 extra minutes to do that. We've said everything we wanted to say. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.